Hi, this is Dane Shoemaker with the Shoemaker Films Podcast. I'm here with Kate Hyland today of Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Kate, how are you today? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on here. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Um, I you know we we know each other through the Chamber Mainline Chamber of Commerce Chamber Connect Group. So um, you know we've been planning this for a little while. So looking forward to learn a little bit more about Cystic Fibrosis uh, Fibrosis Foundation. I'm not too familiar with the disease itself. Sure. So, um, you know, really want to learn, um, you know, your role, director of development, correct? Yep. And what you do here. So why don't we just start with, you know, what is the mission of CFF? Sure. The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's mission is to find a cure for everyone living with CF. Um, We also want to make their lives easier. Um, If we can't find a cure, we want to find, we we do a lot of drug development to make their lives easier and keep them healthier as well. Okay. Um, We also do a lot recently with lung transplants, um, helping people decide whether or not a lung transplant is the way to go for them. Um, A lot of times people who have CF uh, do end up getting a lung transplant um, just because the disease cystic fibrosis is a disease that um, a thick stick, thick sticky mucus builds up in your lungs and causes it to catch different bacteria and causes harm to your lungs. So eventually people with CF, um, will get chronic lung disease and okay. that's usually what ends them. Okay. So tell me about the disease itself. CF is a genetic. I mean, what are the symptoms? Like what's the sure. scope, you know, <clears throat> of it in the U S yep. like CF that. is a genetic disease. Um, everybody's born with two CF genes. You get one from your mom and one from your dad. Um, and if you have two healthy CF genes, you're totally fine. If you have one mutated gene, that means you're a carrier. So that means you could pass it on to your children. Um, Mm. And if you have two defective genes, if you get a defective gene from your mom and a defective gene from your dad, that means you have CF. Um, It's Mm. a very rare disease. So there's only about 40,000 people in the United States that have it, which means that Um, It's also an orphan's disease, which means we don't get any federal funding from the government. So all of the money that we um, raise, we raise ourselves. We don't get from the government. Um, But to put it into perspective, you could fit every single person with CF into Citizens Bank Park where the Phillies play, and you would still have 5,000 empty seats. And so it's just a very rare disease. Very rare disease. But that being said... Um, the worst thing for someone with CF is also is another person with CF. So we could never put everybody with CF in Citizens Bank Park um, because they pass germs to each other that are harmful. So it's also a very isolating disease, too, because the one person wow. that knows what you're going through, you can't be with. Oh, wow. That's that's incredible. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, so do do a lot of people have The one defective gene uh, or there are over a million symptomless carriers. Okay, Um, I am a carrier of the CF gene. Um, Everyone is starting to know now because genetic testing in the United States for CF has become mandatory. So um, when you are pregnant, you're tested to see if you are a carrier. And then if the mom is a carrier, the dad is tested. Um, But they're only tested for the 30 most common mutations and there's 1800 mutations so oh, wow. um okay. it's kind of a crapshoot of whether or not you will actually find out but then as soon as the baby's born a heel prick is taken and the blood is tested to see if they do have cf so they're tested after birth as well okay wow um and so the the main you know when people are diagnosed with cf they have the two mutated genes are they like is are they automatically feeling symptoms down the road is it the lung issues that occur like what are what does that path look like for for patients so i'm not a doctor yeah yeah <laughs> um but everyone has a different cf journey okay. um some people <clears throat> excuse me are born with cf and diagnosed right away and then they they go to the nicu and spend 
potentially their whole lives in the NICU and mm. don't make it out of the hospital, um, depending on their lung formation, how thick and sticky the mucus is. Um, CF is also a disease that affects the pancreas. Um, so your body doesn't break down foods the way that it should. So yeah. everyone with CF also has to take enzymes every time they eat to help break down those fatty foods. Um, okay. A lot of kids with, I shouldn't say a lot, some people with CF are born with a blockage in their bowel, so they have to have surgery right away. Um, that's another symptom of knowing that you definitely have CF. Um, yeah. But everyone's CF journey is very, very different. Yeah. So it really depends on how much lung damage you have in your lifetime, whether or not your pancreas works. Um, we have some people who have CF who have are asymptomatic, who don't know they have CF until they're an adult and something happens and they okay. get tested. And oh, wow. um, it's like that. Uh, we have other people who, unfortunately, they're born and they spend their whole lives in the hospital and CF just wins and, yeah. and they don't make it out of the hospital. So it's really depends on the person. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say is it, is it mostly affect children or is it really just the full gamut? It just depends on uh, on each individual's. Yeah. I mean, when you're born with CF, you have it your whole life. Right. So right. Um, for the first time in the history of the disease, we have more adults living with CF than children, which yeah. is amazing because when I started, the average life expectancy was 27. Mm. And I started with the foundation 13 years yesterday. Yeah, congratulations. 13, yeah. Thank you. 13 yeah. years ago yesterday was my first day. And we didn't have any drugs well, that's not true. We had drugs to um, deal with the underlying symptoms of CF and battle those. Um, but now we have drugs that actually are working to correct the defect in the gene. And the difference in the lifespan of people with CF now is incredible. Um, yeah. We have people living into their 50s, 60s, and beyond. People are becoming grandparents that have CF. Um, I said for the first time in the history of the disease, there are more adults living with CF than kids, which is incredible because yeah. it was never like that before. Back in the 50s when the foundation was found and um, cystic fibrosis was discovered, uh, people weren't even living to grade school. Um, there was just nothing to help it. And now through everyone's donations and the hard work of the CF foundation and our scientists that we employ and working with different pharmaceutical companies, we've really made a huge impact. And, um, yeah. Trikafta was passed through the FDA in 2019. And that drug has made an amazing impact on the lives of people with CF who have the Delta F508 mutation, which is the common, the most common mutation. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you, um, you mentioned that the foundation was founded in 1950s. Tell me a little bit about the history. You know, how was it started? Why was it started? Sure. It yeah. was founded in 1955, actually in Philadelphia, which is okay. exciting. Um, our headquarters are now down in Bethesda, Maryland. Okay. Um, right outside of Washington, D.C. Um, it was founded by parents, parents who discovered this. And um, like I said before, because it is considered an orphan's disease, which means uh, there's not enough people for the government to care about it. Mm. Um, all of the funding for medical research, we have to raise ourselves. Sure. So um, that's what we do all day, every day, call people yeah. and ask for money, ask for donations, encourage them to do fundraising themselves. Um, but we also want to raise awareness about the disease too. Um, not that many people know what CF is. I had no idea what cystic fibrosis was 14 years ago before my nephew was born. Um, I got involved because I have a nephew who has CF. Mm. Um, but it now is just raising awareness and funds to create a cure for everyone because we do have that amazing drug trikafta um, but it only helps about 90 percent of the population so there's still that 10 percent that has rare mutations that we need to find drugs for them as well sure sure 
So in terms of the activities and the programs, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like what, what CFF offers? Yep. We do everything. Um, we have locally, we have 11 different walks. Um, so it's free to walk. You come, you form a team, you register. Um, we, our local chapter is the Eastern half of Pennsylvania, South Jersey, and the whole state of Delaware. So we cover a pretty big region. Um, we have a climb event coming up in November at, uh, Lincoln Financial, you climb up and down the steps through the lower bowl of where the Eagles play, which is not what I do, but a lot of people really like it. It's a really cool event, um, and uh, it's cool because you get to meet Swoop and see the Eagles pep band, I think they're called. Okay, yeah. Um, And uh, you just get to raise funds and awareness, and you get to see the link when no one's there, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also have what we call themed events, which are finest young professionals events, which is really cool. That usually happens in June. Okay. Um, and we have a saver event this fall, which is a chef's tasting, which is really cool too. That's at the Lucy, one of the chess cafe ballrooms down in the city. Okay. Um, that's in October, um, climbs in November. Um, we also have paddle for a cure, which is down the shore, uh, Stone Harbor. We have that in the summer. Um, we also have a different type of online events. So we have an event called Rose Up, which is, which was started by adults with CF five years ago. Um, and it's really just passion fundraising, which is you pick whatever you want to do and have an event and raise money that way on your own terms. Um, so that's pretty cool too. Uh, we have had cycling events in the past. We're taking a year off with that right now, but, um, we've done different things with cycle. It's really, we really have something for everyone. Um, we have cares events for the families that are, they get to get, to get together um, for different dinners or happy hour type events. Um, We have a young professionals group, um, Tomorrow's Leaders, and they get together for different things. Um, They just did their Christmas in July event, which was getting books and different um, inpatient toys for uh, DuPont, which is one of our care centers. Um, So that's really great. We really have something for everyone. We have advocacy events. We have Grampians events, which are grandparents. Um, Mm, Yeah, so we do it all. Yeah, that's great. (laughs) Yeah. And then just in the terms of like the services you provide to patients and those types of activities, the the fundraising helps fuel some of that. Tell me about like what are the, the, the things that you guys are doing for Sure. Yeah. Um, we have a program called Compass within the foundation that okay. um, 844 Compass is the number for it. That if anybody has insurance issues, because we know that happens a lot with medical insurance and people not wanting to cover different things that are needed. Yeah. Um, so Compass takes care of that and helps um, all of them. Um, we have a care center network locally. We have five care centers within our region. Um, so we we uh, help them with supplies and di- we work with them on different things and ask how we can help them. Um, we have the CARES events, which are CARES takes on different groups of people and brings them together. So there's parents dinners and there's siblings yeah. dinners and um, grandparents dinners, different things like that. Um, we do a lot of different advocacy things too. There's a teen advocacy day and, um, a regular advocacy day where, uh, they do March on the Hill, um, which everybody goes down to DC and talks to their senators about trying to get more money for the CF foundation now that it's becoming a bigger disease because people are living longer and different things are happening with that too. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so a lot of advocacy support yep. for families, for their patients, lobbying a little bit. And yep. you said you employ scientists too. Do you are you act? Yeah. So the yeah. foundation has a lab up in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, that we employ all those scientists, and they're wow. doing everything. So um, I don't know how much you know about developing drugs, but not really. for yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah. a scientist either. So from 
concept to passing through the FDA, it costs one billion dollars for a drug so that's why we have to keep continuing to fundraise because we need that money to try and get all of these different um trials passed through the fda and drugs so um right now we have a huge pipeline of drugs for different things different aspects um new uh, inhaled drugs that help with lung function, new enzymes that can help as well. There's all different drugs. We're on um, the second generation of Trikafta is okay. being tested right now. Uh, the first generation had some liver function issues, like the side effects. Um, mm. It also had some side effects with mental health on younger people so they're trying to correct that too because the drug really is a game changer yeah that's great um what about any like success stories maybe from patients or anything like that you want to share anything that you know hits home or yeah i mean i can i can't really speak to that many success stories of our patients um, Trikafta has been huge. Um, I can talk yeah. about my nephew a little bit. I said I have a nephew who is 14 who yeah. has CF. Tell me about that. Um, Tell he me about him. Yeah. started Trikafta the day the world shut down. So Friday the 13th, which is Friday the 13th is today. Well, that's right, um, yeah. But that was Friday the 13th of March in 2020. He started Trikafta the day the world shut down. Yeah. Um, so... So how old is he now? 14? He's 14 now. So okay, was, so 2010, he was born. Yep. And he was living with CF yep. for and nine, he tw- was, 10 years or yep, so. He okay. was in the hospital probably for what they call tune-ups, which um, okay. happens a lot. Uh, it's just a two-week stay for inpatient for CF patients where they get different IVs and it helps their lung function. They do breathing treatments. It's just more concentrated and wow. more helpful that CF patients do that. Um, so since he started Trikafta, he has gained 30 pounds. He has grown five inches. Wow. And he was doing four breathing treatments a day for 30 minutes each and taking 760 pills a month, which is for a 10 year old, 12 year old. It's crazy. That's so, but that's all he ever knew. And now he takes Trikafta in the morning and Trikafta at night. He does not have to do any breathing treatments and he just has to take enzymes when he's eating fatty foods. And he hasn't been in the hospital. We're going to knock on wood there. Well, that's, uh, that's absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's, yeah. The drug is really a game changer for people that have the specific mutation. But we yeah. need to get that game changer drug for everyone. So sure. that's why our mission is still so important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that is a challenge to get that out? I mean, it's out in the market now. It right? is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, some insurances don't cover it. Yeah. So it's really expensive to have drugs that insurance don't cover. Right, so right. Um, my sister pretty much meets her insurance deductible on the first day of the year every yeah. year. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's really a game changer. And the foundation is doing amazing things to try and get other drugs for the last 10%. Sure. Yeah. So um, in terms of your role, director of development, are you involved a lot of those fundraising activities, organizing those events, or what else, you know, what what are you doing here? Yeah, so my role consists of working on the peer-to-peer program, which is our walks and um, any type of endurance event, which is climb and uh, cycle and we used to have a hike event, paddle, um, all of those. So I work, I have worked on every walk that we've had. <laughs> when I started, we had 16 walks. Some of them have combined um, yeah. over the years. Um, but I work on our walk program. I'm also the care center liaison. So I work directly with the care centers, um, the five different care centers. We have one at Jefferson. So Jefferson, Penn, and Christiana Care are our main adult care centers. And then CHOP and DuPont Newmores are our youth care centers. Um, so all of our patients go to those care centers in the area. And I work yeah. with those doctors. Um, I'm also... I've also worked on different things over the years, different events. Um, 
there's not really a whole lot I haven't done in the past 13 years. Um, yeah. So yeah. mainly I work on our walk program and help with that. That's great. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, this will, this episode will probably come out end of September. Okay. What, uh, what do you have coming up this fall, you know, that people should be aware of? Sure. We have, uh, our event Saver at the Lucy on October 21st. Okay. That is a chef's tasting event. Um, nice. There are opportunities for sponsorships. You can buy a ticket. Um, the food is delicious. Um, yeah. It is. It comes with a um, auction there as well. So you'll okay. have different items to bid on. Um, we'll have a bid for a cure speaker. Um, so that'll be someone with CF will be there to tell their story. Um, and then bid for a cure is a hundred dollar tax deductible donation. Um, that's just awesome to give at that event. Sure. Um, and then October 24th, we have Rose Up, which is our um, event started by CF Adults. That is a completely online. You do whatever you want as the Rose Up. You can do it on the 24th. You can do it leading up to the 24th. Um, it's the fifth year for that event. So nationally, we have a $555,000 goal. So we're trying to reach that as well. Um, and then November 9th is our climb event. And that takes place at the link. Um, you can, it, there's a timed climb and a fun climb. So you can do it as quickly as you want with the timed climb to try right. and beat everyone the other else's climbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or you can do it as a fun climb. There's also an aspect of that where you can come and just cheer for the different people participating okay. in that. So nice. that's really cool as well. Um, you can find information about those are the last three events of the year. And then our um, spring events are when we start the walks. So okay. we have Got the it. walks in the spring, the, um, uh, registration websites open for them in November. Yep. Okay. And you can find information on all of that at cff.org. And then if you look at the local, if you look for a find a chapter and type in your zip code or Newtown Square, that's where we're located. Um, it'll take you to our homepage and that'll give you all the other information about how to contact us and get in touch with us. Great. Great. And you're national. You have chapters all over the country or yep. yeah. we have chapters everywhere the san diego chapter takes care of of hawaii and the washington chapter takes care of alaska but okay. in the continental united states we have chapters all over so wherever you are you can find a chapter close to you that's great all right yeah anything else you want to share kate i don't think so yeah. thank you so much for hosting us and giving us a platform to talk more about of course. I mean, it's it's incredible work that you do. And, you know, the, the organization, it's a great mission. And, you know, congrats to 13 years as well. I mean, it's just a lucky number 13. Yeah. <laughs> this is our year. If anybody wants to donate a million dollars, give me a call. Absolutely. Well, Kate, thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening today. Shoemaker Lab is an original production by Shoemaker Films, LLC. If you enjoyed today's content, please consider subscribing on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your content. Follow us on Instagram at shoemaker.films. And if you're a business that's either interested in our video production services or would like to be a guest on the show, get in touch by using the contact form on our website, shoemakerfilms.com. Thank you.